Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back checking out what Chris and I are up to. So in today's video, we are bringing you these two. I've already taken the drawers out of dressers we found on Marketplace. Something happened in February and we sold most all of our furniture. So, and I guess Goodwill isn't getting it in fast enough, so we have to go searching on Marcus Place. And I know a lot of furniture flippers do that for people who make over furniture for a profit. Oh, but I have always been a little bit on the spoiled side that a lot of it has been at Goodwill. So, yep, we had to go traveling about to find a couple dressers. And yes, we were, we were I would still take more, so. Well, you know, when I'm working in our shed inventory that's attached to our pole barn that, yes, I am in desperate need of finding some furniture. So as I started working on the two of these that we picked up off of Marketplace, uh, totally one was actually across the border in another state and one was, yeah, they weren't anywhere local. So uh, they were kind of like long lost twins that weren't identical. As you see, I have some broken off veneer that I need to fix. But overall, that, that seems minimal compared to the things that we've fixed before. The drawers seem to be in good shape. The insides are nice and clean. They're sliding in and out for me. Nope, I haven't taken them out to see if there's any issues, but so far, so good. So see what I mean? They are so close to being identical, but you know, not quite. But I know I can notice right off the bat I have a problem with this bottom drawer, but once I take the drawers out, I can figure that out. I don't see any major where I need to do any filler on it. The drawers are nice and clean. They are a little hard to slide in and out, but if, if you notice, I don't think the drawers are all in the right order. I always think that probably the, one of the easiest parts of the whole taking a dresser part is removing the hardware. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? Because yeah, sometimes it just comes right off with a drill and then other times you're like, okay, well, I just took those off with a drill, but why won't this come off with a drill? And then you go get a flathead and then you go get a Phillips and then you get another flathead. And the next thing you know, you have your whole screwdriver set over by you trying to take hardware off. The next dresser said, I was like, oh, they don't have any screws, so they should just pull right out, right? Right? No, <laughs> I couldn't get these to budge at all. So our assumption that was that maybe somebody just glued them in. So Chris got some screws, started tapping them. Yeah, I guess if you can't find the length of screws, maybe you just glue them in. Maybe this is the way that there were. Maybe there was something that was supposed to be screwed in there. Maybe it broke off when we were taking them out from being glued in. But now we got to try to get the piece of metal that's in that hole out. Chris just got a nail, started tapping with a hammer and working them out. Just, uh, you just never know what you're going to find. All I can say is I'm definitely glad that I have a stash of hardware. So yes, I'm going to be filling in these holes and not reusing that hardware on these dressers. So I have a lot of holes to fill. Now, if it was just a knob itself, I don't need to fill that in. I will be replacing a knob. I'm definitely going to use different poles though. So I'm just mixing up a generous amount of Durham water putty. 
Um, yeah, because I have a lot of holes to fill. So if you never used Durham Water Putty, it's a wood filler. It comes in a powder form. Just a little bit of water. You can mix up what you need. And then depending on how wet or how dry you need it is how much water you add. If you're wondering why I was putting tape in the inside, it's a hole. I don't want my putty, even though I mixed it up pretty dry so I could really push it in that hole. But I want to put tape on the other side so it doesn't go all the way through. The force of gravity being on its side like this, pulling it down. Most of that veneer that was broken off was pretty tight, but I had this one little corner that needed a little bit of Starbond glue to make sure that it had a good seal. Now, for, because of the placement of what is missing, I'm going to be using Bondo. So Bondo, if you have not used it, it's a smelly substance, but I still can't smell since I had COVID. So I don't even know if it smells or not, but I know from past experience that it does smell. So I'm just guesstimating at how much I need. I just grabbed a little bit with a metal spatula, a little bit of the hardener. You mix it together and you got to work kind of fast because as soon as you mix that harder hardener together, it starts to set up. But just just where those spots are, I just really, really want the hardest substance that I have in my arsenal to fix it. I actually filled in all these holes from the hardware the night before, knowing that when I got to the Bondo part, I needed to, within a half hour, be able to start to sand it. Because the longer you let it sit, the harder it is to sand. So you definitely want to get it as smooth as you can. But on these drawer fronts, I need to get all this water putty nice and smooth. So I've just got some 150 grit to take that down. The curved part, I'm just going to go in and hand sand it with some 220 sandpaper. I don't want to take my electric sander with a chance of taking that curve off. When it comes to the drawers that have these spaces, I have a plan to put some paper on these. So I want to take all that finish off and get it all the way down to the wood. So now when it comes to this one, this one is very shiny. So I definitely, I was a little bit unsure, like, am I just going to get down and this is a veneer, but I believe as I'm working on this, taking that water putty off, I'm pretty sure that there's wood underneath here and it's not a veneer board like what the top of the dresser is. I would really like my paper to pop by taking this all the way down to the wood also. So happy, happy, happy when you find out that, yep, it's not a veneer board that you can take it all the way down to the wood. So now that my drawers are all sanded, I can go back in and my Bondo has set up that I can get this sanded nice and smooth. Now, never worry if you are using Bondo and you don't get it completely or if you need to go back and do a little bit of other wood filler, but at least I've got the general amount filled in. So now I can go in and start to scuff sand the rest of the dresser just using a 150 grit. The same for this other dresser. Yep, we're just flip-flopping back and forth for these twins, I'm going to call them. And yes, look at that. That wood on the top doesn't even match the dresser. So you can definitely tell that's a veneer board, even without looking at the back of the dresser. That I have everything sanded, it's time to get these clean. But first off, I'm going to take the air compressor and get all that sanding dust that I've created. Even though I have a vacuum hooked up to my sander, it's really not the sand from our sander as it is. This is just how what was in the inside of these. As I'm bending all the way down to get all that dust and whatever else debris out, I'm like, oh, well, what was that piece of wood? Oh. Oh, that was what was the wonkiness. Not just that the drawers were out of order, but that is broken. 
Yeah, plain and simply, everything needs cleaned, but I really like to spend time, especially since these were, you know, secondhand pieces. I like to make sure that I'm cleaning every little bit that I can for the next person. And then sometimes you just need to have a water change before you can move on to cleaning the outside of the piece. I usually always start with the inside and go go to the outside because sometimes I do need to get some cleaner water. So yep, just some super clean, some hot water and getting this nice and clean now. Getting any any gunk, any buildup. Even though I sanded it, it still has stuff that just needs to have a good prep surface so I can make sure my paint is going to adhere properly. Now that I have the body of the dressers it dealt with, now I have to deal with each and every one of the drawers. And yep, take the air compressor, get any sanding residue. I like to really stick the air compressor in the corners of each one of these drawers, making sure that I get anything that might be hidden in there. Even though these were pretty clean in the inside, they still had a lot of little dust and debris in them. Just like the body of the dresser, it's not just the front of the drawers that I want to clean. I want to clean this whole thing, make sure that everything's good. Especially since you're a reseller, you want to make sure that this is a nice clean piece for that next person. going to go ahead and spray these pieces today so I want to protect that back. There's nothing wrong with the back. There's no sense of wasting paint. So why not just use some Dollar Tree contact paper and some Dollar General 2 inch masking tape to cover up the back. So what I do is I use the one piece of contact paper, the sticky side, but then I also tape on the other part of it not to waste. Where I sanded down all the way to the wood on these drawer fronts, I'm just going to put the two inch masking tape on the top of these, since I'm spraying them, I don't want to cover that up. new for me is I'm going to stick the drawers back in and try to spray. I've not done this before. I tried it on a small little piece just a little bit ago. So I'm just wrapping tape in where I think that the spray might um, come in. So I'm just making sure that I'm protecting the side of those front sides of the drawers along with that front side of the drawer face itself. And then now I'm going to be using shellac in anywhere that I put the Bondo, the wood putty. This is going to even out the prosody. If I got a little heavy with my sander, I just want to touch those spots with a couple coats of shellac. And I got the drawers in. I got these on rollers carts so I can roll them in and out of our spray room. All I keep thinking is the twins are ready for their spray tan. So if you watch our channel flipping out long enough, you know that usually I would have sprayed the whole piece with shellac and had it act as my primer. But yes, I know my hair is a mess when you have to put a um, mask on. So actually I'm trying out this professional primer. We saw another YouTuber, uh, a gentleman called I Like To Make Stuff. He actually recommended it for this kind of shiny board, the press board, the veneer board. So definitely I wanted to give this a try. Bought it at Menards. I see you can buy it from Amazon. So I will try to remember to link it. But yes, yep, safety first. Hair does not matter when it comes to not breathing in aerosols. if you are new to our channel when we built our workshop to do this ginger chick rehab thing this was the our spray room and our storage area was actually a shed that we had so we had the idea that you know this extra space would be nice if the contractor would build this 
workshop into the shed and this has worked out wonderful so this is what this space really is this was actually a lean to or in the back of our shed that our dog used to be in but it has worked out wonderful for being an extra space for a spray room now this is a couple hours later it says it's quick dry but i wanted to make sure that it was good and dry i'm just taking a 300 grit sandpaper just lightly making sure that there's no nothing raised or anything this is definitely smooth that's why i like to use the shellac as the primer i don't like to brush on primer i don't like to roll on primer because it always leaves a texture and i like our pieces to be smooth so if you ever wondered that is why so i definitely think cost efficient this is probably just a little bit cheaper than what the shellac is so i'm definitely liking on this so so far. So now I'm rolling them back in and it's time to spray them. So I'm going to be using the ready to use black onyx right off the shelf from, from Walmart using our true true coat 360 handheld sprayer i love this thing we have used and abused it we've had to buy a different tip we just had to buy a different airflow valve but minimal because we if you watch our channel enough you know i use this we use this a lot so yep they have little replacement parts when you have used it a lot and we do clean out after every job in case you're wondering i don't really like to let stuff sit and i especially take the little tip out and set it in some mineral spirits every time after i'm done <music> And this is a powerful sprayer, so if you stand back far enough, you can get some great coverage. But yes, you always do need two coats. And of course, I was a little bit worried about getting into the drawers, but look at how well this covers. some reason when I was sprayed I must have thought that there was tape on those bottom drawers I didn't hit completely even cover those but no worries we'll get that with the next coat now I'm not sure what you're supposed to do about this little where you can tell that it didn't get but this is still the first coat I'm going to pull the drawers out just a wee bit and go ahead and get those painted I don't want a paint bump if I go on to my second coat I rather do a little bit of a coat I taped all the way down the side of the drawers so I knew that I was probably going to have to do that. I'm sure once I'm done with the second coat, there will be a little bit of touch up I have to do. But no, that's, I'm, I'm liking it so far. Now the other dresser, I didn't have to do it because those drawers set all the way in. So yep, just one dresser to touch up. Well, I guess it's that time to go look in our stash for some new hardware. <laughs> yep, I tell you, I can't pass it when I am thrifting. So let's see if we have some matching hardware in our stash of all stash to put, use on these two dressers. And then since I'm going to be doing some decoupage paper on these, I don't want to detract from what the paper. So I just wanted some simple handles and some simple knobs. And look at I have enough to do both of the dressers with the same hardware. Yep, these were thrifted. That was a lot of hardware that came off something.
Now that I got those all cleaned up and they're dry, I'm going in with some Rust-Oleum. I'm just doing this in my our basic go-to black, that Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one in the flat black. And then I will, I always do all the sides and then I will finish them up with after they dry with some polycrylic to seal that paint in. Now we were testing out using our sprayer um, to apply top coat. So a lot of times I would do the spray can of polycrylic. I didn't really have any problems with any whiteness because I have the antiquing wax I put over it, but enough people suggested, and I do know it. I remember that tip from Katie um, from her channel. So yes, all I'm doing here is I have a polycrylic that's been mixed in with a darker black paint before that I previously used. So I have that labeled so I don't accidentally use it on something else. But I'm just mixing it into my sprayer container here. I cleaned it out, but I didn't clean it out fully that I rinsed all the black paint out. So that should be enough paint to tint my top coat just a bit. I know I've been asked about our sprayer a lot. I love this thing. So as you see, it has a screw on top. That little black piece on the top is the air valve I was talking about. So once you get your sprayer back together, <laughs> yep, especially when you're using black paint, it's just yeah, it's just a mess and I, I wear a lot of paint. I get into my job. So now I'm gonna put the machine back on top of the paint, the, where it holds the paint. You twist it in, you lock it in place. I'm constantly always wiping. And then now I have it in the prime position and then I open up my air valve and then since this isn't full of paint, it's going to take me a little while. And as you see, it will bubble up. You know that there's air in that bag. You squeeze the bag until all you get is paint running up. So I always have a towel to catch that paint. And yeah, that's how what I was talking about when I said an air valve. Still in that prime position, I want to make sure that my top coat is flowing properly. And then that it is. Yes, I definitely don't want to test that on the piece that I am putting top coat on. And then when it comes to the top coat, you don't want to overlay it. You just want to put that nice mist on. And as you see, I'm trying to stand back as far as I can because this shoots out a lot. get any drips or runs and you're trying it out this way just take a little bit of a mister bottle and a sponge polycrylic's water soluble so you'll be able to smooth it out but I look pretty good I think I did okay this time have all my black touch up I do need to touch that up with the polycrylic because when I go to do the antiquing wax without the polycrylic on top of the paint it will become more of a brown so I know I, that's one of the questions I get asked a lot about the polycrylic over the black paint it's the way the black paint absorbs the antiquing wax so if you want a more browner piece or a browner piece, <laughs> you put anti straight antiquing wax. I just like that hue of it toning down the black just a wee bit, so that's why I put the polycrylic on first. Yes, I have used these Rocycle papers, oh my goodness, before, but as soon as I put them in our booth, they are gone. So I'm going to keep using it. As long as it keeps selling, I'm going to keep using it. And every piece is just a little bit different. Your drawers are a little bit different. The item you're putting it on is just a little bit different. So it always turns out a little bit different. So now, as you see, a lot. that's why I took the time to sand those all the way down. If you put this over a dark paint like the black, it doesn't pop quite as as much it fades away so just a look you're looking for but now what I need to do is I need to figure out how to cut the piece of paper to fit on the drawer faces that I have so yep I'm just really taking my time I'm studying where I can make my cuts because once you cut it you've cut it even though yeah you do glue it on so you could glue it back together so but yep just studying a little bit making sure that I can get what wording I can get on here 
So yep, I finally made the executive decision where my cuts were going to be. Now I hold my breath as I'm cutting to try to stay as straight as I can. But yes, I'm just going to separate the wording out. So now that I've made my cuts, I'm going to go in and iron out that heavy wrinkle. They come folded, so a lot of times I just work with it, but I thought I would just share with you because I have a lot of people also suggest, hey, you can iron that. So, yep, I'm going to go ahead with a peach of parchment paper so that I'm not putting my dirty old shop iron on top of this, and I don't know if that would stick. So just to, to safety, um, a little bit of parchment paper to protect that paper. And as you do see, it kind of makes it roll a little bit, but I think I can work with that. That I have an iron, I still have some more cuts to do, so I have to figure out where my center point is going to be. I still want you to see the wording. I don't want to cut out any of the letters that you don't see the wording. So, you know, just taking some time, figuring out where I need to make my cuts so that I can separate, especially into this top one, into the three pieces. And the bottom one, cutting in half isn't too bad, but this one that I need to figure out how to center in the middle to make it look appropriate as I'm gluing all three pieces down. Yes, you could just glue the whole thing down, but I didn't want to leave out any of the wording to confuse what was actually being said. For my medium to glue these down, I'm just using some matte polycrylic, the same thing I used on the dresser body itself. So I'm just going putting a light, very I want to make sure I have it on even if I can. The wood is going to soak it in, so I might have to add more after I laid it down. So, yep, you just have to start gluing them down now and then trying to make sure that I cut it size appropriate and making it as smooth as I possibly can. So I thought, since I always have viewers say, hey, you can iron down your paper after you applied it, and maybe they mean with Mod Podge, I'm not too sure, but so I'm, okay, I already have my iron hot and a piece of parchment paper, so why not? Everybody's always worried about the wrinkles. I'm not really worried about the wrinkles. I think they add character, and I can't say that it took any more wrinkles out with the polycrylic as the medium, as if it helped really dry it really fast. that I was going to put on this the wording is just too long if I cut it in half it's not all going to fit so it's going to cut off the wording it may not read right so I decided like okay we will just set this off to the side we'll use it on another project and I'm going to use the bottom wording of this this will cut in half it will make sense when I cut it in half and glue it onto these two bottom spaces And as you see with this paper, the 5-2-B fits perfectly onto that middle section. So I just need to, yep, there again, figure out where I need to make my cuts. I guess I lost my mind for a second because all of a sudden I started cutting the middle one. I'm like, no, stop. So luckily I stopped before I got to the wording once I hit the edge of the Oh, oh, yeah, this was not one in the middle. This one needed to be three. Good thing we glue these together. Yeah, I'm not perfect at all, you guys. I make lots of mistakes. A lot of them I could edit out not to show you, but I had to show you that. Yes, yep, oops.
so I tried this out on a previous piece using the tip of my mouse sander to distress my edges. Now I got a layer of polycrylic, I got two layers of paint, and I've got a primer underneath there, and I want to get down to the wood. So this would take a very steady hand, a very confident, a very nice, and go very, very slow. So, but I like that I can um relieve my hand from trying to do this with sandpaper and yes just the tip of the mouse sander to get down to that raw wood i love to distress and make these sharp edges pop Now that I have all my edges distressed and I blew it off with the air compressor, I'm taking some fine grit steel. Well, I want to blow it off because I don't want to be sanding those chunks of sanded off paint into my finish. So yes, this is the steel wool is going to make everything nice and smooth and it also is going to open up that polycrylic for me. And for any areas I just could not get the tip of that mouse sander in like this little the two layers of the top i'm just going in with some 220 sandpaper and just gingerly trying to pop that feature yep and if you know if i accidentally touched or i took off too much paint or scraped when i did it you know just sand it a little bit put a little bit of paint a little bit of polycrylic and move go ahead and move on yes i did touch a couple times i did not video that but still time spent on touching up the few little spots I touched was way less than what it would have taken me to hand sand and distress down all those layers. Well, that works so good on the body of the dressers or the chest of drawers, whichever way you want to call them, because I really like to make multifunctional piece that you don't always have to stick into a bedroom. So yes, now I'm going to use the tip of that mouse sender to get those edges on the front of this, on the front of these drawers. So wish me luck. And it's definitely all about angles, all about how I can hold the mouse sander that I'm not going to lay the back down. So everything is all about how I can achieve this. Yes, this is how I'm going to cut the excess paper off around these fronts. Yep, it works. I can feel the edge. I can see that edge. When I was gluing them down, I made sure that I pushed them so I could see the edge and I can feel it with that tip. Now, yep, we are really winding down to finishing these pieces. So now antiquing wax in a bowl. Oh my goodness, this is, yes, I just absolutely, yeah, to say obsessed, <laughs> I just am so addicted to doing this. I just love that satiny look that it gives black paint. So you just wipe on, it soaks it in, and then you wipe off any of the excess. It really makes where I distress down to the wood really pop. And yes, I did sand the sides that are black of these drawers with steel wool. I think, you know, I, I try to edit so much out because you can't even imagine how much I film because I'm just leaving my camera going. So yes, so that was steel wool around the edges that just, just needs to be done so the way that it accepts into the polycrylic. And yes, as I'm antiquing wax, I'm going right over top of the paper. That's why I don't put any top coat on there. I don't do that till after I've done my antiquing wax. I want to really brown that up. I want to make it look a lot more like wood.
Now that my wax dried for a couple hours, I'm going in and I'm sealing. Now I'm putting my top coat on top of my, yep, on top of the wax. It's worked out completely fine for me. So I will do a nice coating of the spray polycrylic on the top of where I have the paper. Now that that polycrylic is dry, we can start putting back the hardware. And of course, I picked the easy one where I just have the knobs and I just have to poke it through the paper. Now Chris is using the Craig tool to realign where the new poles need to be. This was one of the best investments I think we ever got at a random pallet sale. One last thing before these can be complete is Chris needs to make another slide for that bottom drawer and he has made so many of these. It's I'm not even going to try to explain how he matches them up, but yep, he takes the old piece, figures out what the size, what the shape it needs to be, pre-drills the holes, and then we are good to go and have a new drawer slide. for watching today's video of the marketplace long lost twins i know they're not identical but they are definitely now that i've made them over they are very similar so again thank you for watching today's video let me know down in the comments i try to tweak every video try to make something a little bit new try one of the techniques that's suggested even if i know the technique or not but it's just fun to change things up and i still am able to achieve the goal of the way i want a piece to look so thank you again for watching today's video guys and as always thank you for being part of our youtube family and if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to bye